I was in prayer because I had a project before me and the engineer came and looked at my house and saw cracks here, saw cracks there right? and he analyzed my house and said in about two years time my roof will fall in so I said okay what is the solution he said I should pack out me and my kindred and they will have to break the house down and build it again meanwhile I never had a budget for that kind of project it was not planned for and I am a planning man I don't fight a battle that I don't know that I will win so I sit down I calculate I sequence and he just came with this information he said you have two years to change this condition hallelujah so I spoke to my wife about it she moved to with the children to her friend then they broke the place without a plan I went back to God I said um, I am insufficient right now these are my plans and this is not part of my plan but this matter is important you know what he told me he said build glory the little money I had I mobilized and the project began do you know that year that was the year that they paid us our full entitlements as staff in our office that year in fact they even recalled some others that did not pay in some years and paid in that year why because he said what Deal. and after that year when the god sent man that god gave us to help us reclaim our destiny when he retired the issue went back to status quo but you see all those manipulations took place because god said build i was quickened with a directive that directive i did not have it in myself it was in god and the great one you know the engineer gave me two years i had a two-year time frame but that was the beginning of the first year and the great one said build now i found all the questions that I had to ask in life, I found the answers in God. But you need to be quickened to hear a directive from God that will work like magic. Do you know that when we finished that building, that was when dollar now went up. Dollar became one dollar per 500. Is it 550? Yeah, we did 550. That was the time we wanted to build the administrative block of that school. I went to God. I said, yeah, thank you for building the house. But we have school. You know what he said? Build. We were buying iron rods. But the money didn't stop. It was a directive that came from God. What I'm talking about is beyond my capacity. Anytime you feel insufficient, latch on to resurrection power. There's wisdom in it. Right? There are directives that you can receive that will make you operate at a level that is beyond your ability. It's just that the average believer doesn't want to take advantage of that resurrection deposit. Meanwhile, it's a resurrection deposit that is a basis upon which heaven expects us to live in the newness of life. It's not the life you know, it's a new life. But the power of this new life is tied to the reservoir of resurrection. The same spirit that brought Jesus from, from the dead will take me beyond the scope of all my insufficiencies and inadequacies. If I wait on him sufficiently, he will quicken either wisdom to me quicken understanding to me give me the ability to stand before him so that at the end of the day it is not of him that wills of him that runs but is of him that shows mercy now can you decide today that you are going to walk with God because the provision of resurrection is the solution to all of the challenges that are affiliated with mortality huh? because the worst thing that can happen to a man is that he dies meanwhile the power to reverse the protocol of death is in resurrection. And resurrection happens to be the provision that God made available to ensure that all the insufficiencies of your mundane life are sufficiently sustained. Because I remember many years ago, I had this challenge with stammering and I could not make a complete statement without a speech impediment. I was concerned about that and I went to God in prayer and the Lord said after about three days of prayer he gave me a scripture as for you this is my covenant with you I put my words in your mouth 
and in the mouth of thy seed and in the mouth of thy seed seed that's what God told me so anytime I'm going to preach I bring that scripture before him in the place of prayer the reason why I remember the scripture is because I use it every time I'm to go to the altar and so I can stammer into the hall but when I go to the pulpit it is lifted because he put something inside see I've walked with that commitment that God made with me all these years it is in my quiver and anytime I need to speak for God I reach out reach back into my quiver and I present it to God it becomes a basis for him invading my life with the necessary utterance required to communicate his counsel and so I don't need a fresh encounter on that matter because I kept the substance of that encounter in my quiver and the God who cannot lie when I present it before him he releases grace to accomplish his counsel in my life hallelujah so I don't I don't need to no 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 I was praying this year and God showed me a highway and he said you're going out and you're coming in is blessed hallelujah he's blessed that means that we go and I will come back and there will be no challenge I kept it in my quiver and just in case you say there is a particular place I need to pass through and bandits are there I know that when I'm coming the bandits would have gone on sabbatical because he said that my going out and my coming in is what is blessed is in my quiver I don't need a fresh fasting and prayer enterprise to secure a word on that matter anymore because the eternal God he has spoken about that aspect of my life are you with me and that's why we we're asking how many stones do you have in your bag the stones represent the contract that you have with God why do we pray we're fasting he showed up as okay I will do this so when God commits himself he's supposed to impart rest to you if only you can you can connect with it by faith rest should be your portion that should be the outcome of your dealing with God hallelujah amen all right the Bible says it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life <clears throat> you cannot fulfill the expectation of God if you are not quick and so when God says meet me in the night you cannot do that in the flesh there is a quickening that God will bring on you every time you want to fulfill something that is naturally impossible in fact there are several levels of obediences that you cannot furnish until you are quickened just like Abraham that was asked to go and bring his son as a sacrifice that's not normal obedience that every normal Christian can fulfill there are dimensions of quickening enabling that God makes available in order for us to be able to fulfill some of his demands so when you now said okay God you want me to meet you in the night you will have to enable me to do what you want me to do so that believer that is conscious of the fact that there is an enablement facility that God has put in place that will give you the capacity to overcome physical weakness so that you can furnish the expectation of God not not understanding huh? is an understanding of covenant because the Spirit of God comes to empower us to do what we cannot do naturally by ourselves and uh, it is on the principle of resurrection that the possibilities that we have in God are manifested through our Christian life now let me tell you something I don't read the Bible naturally before I read the Bible what I do because I know that if I'm going to hear the voice of God from the pages of the scriptures I need to be quickened I am a student of Watchman Nee and Watchman Nee says that uh, the person studying the Bible is more important than the study because of that you will need to he said that in recommending that spiritual labors that need to go down before you attempt to dig into scripture and he gave a prescription of labors that are required in order for you to be quickened to the level where the Holy Spirit can draw your attention to several things that will, will become express words of God to you you can't do that naturally you have to be quickened you can't pray naturally you have to be quickened and this quickening that I said is one of the manifestation of the spirit of resurrection are you still with me I said the spirit of resurrection is what powers our Christian life in this covenant the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead if you have that spirit then heaven is expecting you to live in the newness of life exactly uh -huh. that expectation is based on the potential that is in the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead if your situation is not as bad as death because the spirit raised someone that died from the dead if your challenge is not as bad as that you have not yet scratched the ability of that spirit 
So just in case you, you have a, a lousy prayer life, it's not because there is no enablement. It's just because you have not yet understood that in this covenant there is a provision for you to operate beyond your human capacity. And that possibility is in the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from what? From the dead. Many people that understand this principle more than others are enjoying more from God than other people. I know that it is not possible. You know, the Bible says, so shall we not depart from thee. It says, quicken us and we shall call upon thy name. I know that the power to pray is not human ability. It is spiritual ability. All right? And so the psalmist says, quicken us. So you need to be quickened in order for you to be able to pray sufficiently. The way you need to pray. In order for several things around your life to change. I know that by intellectual study of the Bible, you will never hear God say the Lord. So I go and get quickened first. When I'm quickened, then I come to the pages of the book. And I might remain on one verse for five days, for six days. Because I'm quickened. So spiritual realities begin to take place. The extent to which you enjoy God is the degree to which you know that in God there is a resident enabling. Right? And you seek God's impute in every area of insufficiency that you notice around your life. Maybe problems are coming and you know what you need now is wisdom. Wisdom is not something you can achieve intellectually. You will need to be quickened for you to understand the mind of God about that matter. All of these realities are actually offshoots of the potential of the resurrection power that is the operating system running your Christian life. But the de degrees to which we exploit this possibility is different based on understanding. There was a day. This day was a terrible day. Somebody very significant in the family died. And this person had touched so many lives. And so the weeping was much. And the people that were depending on this person, whose lives will now be stuck in the balance because of his absence. There were so many, and their wailing was quite intense. Tears. Weeping. And I happened to be one of the people that was a beneficiary of that person. So, the name of the person we tell Wailing and weeping. Wailing and weeping. And indeed, that person's death led to the truncation of the destinies of many people till today but before that person's death I found the Lord the person's death for me was an opportunity for the Lord to show me his capacity See, at the end of the day the man of covenant will thrive in terrible situations a man without covenant will be a victim of situations and circumstances that is how we know if you really have a walking covenant with God when that person died I knew that my options were not many. And what was available to me was the God I found in my sojourn. So I went to him. Because at that funeral, I knew that nobody would pay my fees anymore. I knew that I was on my own. So I went to Jehovah. And obviously, the fees of so many people were no longer paid. I went to Jehovah. I said, there's a challenge. I don't know how I'll finish school. Can you help me? And the legitimate people that were on ground that were supposed to carry my responsibility if the family system was functional. Those ones, what they did was that they presented the situation as if they had their own issues to handle. And they are so handicapped that they cannot carry extra body. So at the end of the meeting that was held after the burial, there was no solution for anybody's life. Sometimes you need a situation like that to find where your strength really lies. And in the place of prayer, what God did was that he showed me a vision of some years ahead. And then in that vision, I was the helper of many men. So instead of God, are you with me? Now I was praying, who will help me? The vision I saw was that I was what? There. Sometimes the things you are looking for are the exact things that God has ordained you to be, but you are not looking to the possibilities that are in God. My prayer for sustenance for school fees, he ended after that vision. And then in practicality, the way it happened was that when we left the barrier, I just had one more semester to go on campus. And then my sister's elder uh, husband now came and said, uh, God spoke to him to ensure that I don't suffer again. You know those days, I don't know if you remember when 200 Naira note, 100 Naira note came out for the first time. You know, we're using, the highest denomination was 50 Naira then. That was, that was the time. 
That was the first bundle of 200 naira notes I ever had in my life. With that bundle, there was no need to cook again. My life improved dramatically after that situation of loss. Dramatic. The stove was not needed. There are many things that were not needed again. I went on an upgrade. A major upgrade. That's not all. I was on campus. And the best restaurant on campus those days, the owner of the restaurant, some of you know the story, came to me and said in the spirit, she had a dream that somebody put charm, charm in a restaurant. Then I now came and I removed the charm. I said, eh. And she noticed that customers are going. I said, okay. I went on three days fasting. On the third day, I came to her. In fact, when she saw me, she called me, customers have come back. I have done what she saw in the dream. She said, I should come. That this seat in the restaurant is my own. Until I leave this school, I can come and eat for free. I didn't eat there once because I had money. God settled those issues. I didn't eat there. All kinds of things. Supply came from different quarters. My life improved from that time till now. I don't know, but I came to challenge you. I came to challenge you tonight that it is possible for you to go another step higher. So what I'm saying is, my life was not as good. When my dad was alive, my life was not as good as the life I started living when he died. That's what I'm saying. That's my testimony. Because I went to God and I now saw how God can travel over many states and touch the heart of a man and say, be responsible for that. At the end of the day, I had three sponsors. None of them was a direct relative as it were. The closest was my brother-in-law. Three sponsors. I had more than I wanted. I had more than enough. I said, oh boy, this thing they work with. So when I went for youth service, before I just got to youth service, I said, we have to do that thing again. I started praying. Life after youth service. And I prayed for one year. And I didn't get any tangible thing. I took a teaching job. I continued the prayer. Six, three months into the next year, God now began to speak to me. That is where he spoke to me about this ministry. That's where he spoke to me about that woman. On my knees there. I was not asking for wife. I was asking, what next after youth service? He showed me this ministry in Makodi. And then he showed me a woman to match. When you are looking for a woman around the way, <laughs> wake up. You are not alone. You have a covenant partner. He knows you are insufficient. If only you can trust him. He will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. In fact, the time came because of my churchy life. Churchy life. Many, the elder ones in the family, they did something as if they disowned me. And I accepted it. Because they were a distraction to my life. That's why when I went to Canada for your service, I was not willing to come back until God answers me. Because I did not want any one of them to help me. Because if they help you, you will be a slave forever. So I went like Abraham. The only thing I had was God. I came back from your service a prophet. One that could discern the heart of God. Hallelujah. I never needed them after your service. Because God answered all my questions. I have lived everything that God showed me. Till now. You know what he shows me now? Because I went back again. I went back again during my birthday. On my birthday. I locked the door. When I came back from work on Friday. And I was there till Monday morning. And he showed me great signs. Yes. He showed me that the United Kingdom, Ghana and South Africa. He has opened it to me now. Oh my. I was telling my wife before we came for this service. I had an invitation. My first invitation to South Africa to preach the gospel. I don't know. What did they call that place? Well, I've forgotten the name of the place. But he said, now is the nations. You have been going through training. And this is the time of emergence. Will you follow Jesus? Follow him. He knows the end from the beginning. You can trust him. That, you see, your life cannot be in a situation that is, there's nothing like helpless. Nothing like helpless. In this day of trouble and tribulation and trial, the Lord calls us to walk with him in covenant. He knows the way through the wilderness. The reason why you have failed is because you trust yourself. Leave that matter. Become the circumcision. That worship him how? In spirit. He showed me. He showed me. Yesterday after the meeting, I don't know. I think Kwame Nkrumah University is in Kumasi. Is that true? It's in Kumasi. So we are having a major revival conference in Kwame Nkrumah University. He spoke to me last year. 
and then now the doors have opened in the united kingdom the doors have opened just like the lord said it he will always give the direction and then he will bring what he has said to pass i, I don't know if that's difficult you wait on him to get direction and then you allow him to bring the word to pass that is the life i've lived for many years i can show you my diaries when god said this when it came to pass a lot of them and i have a lot of diaries because i've documented my work with god somebody came to a particular service and then she received a prophecy of marriage when she received this prophecy of marriage she now started plotting how to get married so anybody that any guy that sustains a discussion with her she'll collect the number send a text message and then after a few weeks the messages will start becoming very personal because there's a prophecy and said that she was going to marry so she is working by faith in keeping with the prophecy so she's trying to engage and then when she tries that once twice three times and then the heart is broken she will think that people are rejecting her so the devil will come and even deceive her that see you're not good there are many things that can happen to you when your modality is in the flesh but the circumcision they have tried in the flesh long enough and they have so judged that the flesh profits nothing so they are waiting on the holy ghost to perform his counsel that's the difference are you with me this life of utter dependence on the holy spirit is the way by which god's covenant true covenant people are identified if you find people that still have confidence in the flesh they don't understand what covenant living is and i assure you you are missing if the holy ghost is not the master of your existence there are so many things that you are missing you are missing out of the best that god has for you at me i will wait and pray and fast and pray and pray till god speaks to me it doesn't matter how long it takes sometimes six months no problem when i was looking for direction after youth service it took me two years but i didn't stop the things that god spoke to me in that prayer adventure is what i am living in today what would my life have been like if god did not give me that direction such as are not the circumcision we take off without the word of god when there are seemingly some opportunities present themselves and you take off marriage comes they say the guy is in the united states of america and he looks good you took off without consulting the holy ghost you will spend a lifetime being afflicted with the insufficiency of the wisdom with which you arrived at that decision the circumcision they have no confidence in the flesh everything must be judged by the spirit in their life and it doesn't take they, they don't matter it doesn't matter how long it takes that's the life of the spirit that's a proof that you are indeed a jew that is circumcised in your heart you have no confidence in the flesh if god says this is the way to go you don't go in between and begin to argue and try to no if god say run the meaning is wrong that's the way the circumcision lives they live by what the spirit supplies that becomes their wisdom becomes the way they operate they don't have any other life outside of this and if your life is powered by the holy ghost the decisions you make the person you marry the things you do what the focus of your life is all of these things are powered by the holy ghost you will not discover that your life will not be at your own expense as you are doing it the man that sent you he will make provision you will be allowed to make provision for yourself if you are the one responsible for what you are doing but it's a concession the reason why things are working for them is not because the economy is good it's working for them because they were led and sustained by the spirit you get that this i'm trying to establish covenant living before i take us to another point so the death of jesus has three major implications we see the judgment that was born brought upon the old man by reason of the death of jesus and the typology that was used to establish that is how that moses raised up the brazen serpent in the wilderness that informed the way jesus died all right and we see that that was a typology that was indicative of the old man the old man brazen means judgment there is a judgment on the old man in the death of jesus hallelujah and that judgment uh we see the full scope of the judgment and the realities that should follow that judgment in the book of romans chapter 6 verse 6 so we saw that this morning this is the second aspect of the death of Jesus. Because to establish this covenant required blood. Are you still with me? It required death. 
and the covenant was signed by the blood of Jesus the second aspect of his death the Bible says the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world that sin there is in singular not in plural <coughs> and that sin there is talking about the original sin for which the justice system of heaven captured the recompense of that particular sin to be death it is because of the claims of divine justice that Jesus had to die to for this as a sin offering in order for sin no longer to have dominion over our mortal body right are you with me now uh, you remember the scripture that says for this this what's that scripture I think it's first John chapter 3 verse 5 help me with that also help me with that also we saw in number one that in the prosecution of your Christian life are you with me we saw this morning that in the prosecution of a Christian life you need to bring the old man because the old man will try to regulate your civilization and anytime the old man begins to bring suggestions to you you cast it to the cross because that is a place of the old man the old man has been judged already and it is a sentence of death that God has placed on the old man because Jesus as uh, he died uh, lifted up just like Moses's brazen serpent was lifted up to bring judgment on the old man this is the second aspect the Bible says and he knew that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him was no sin this is the scripture if we begin to read down for this purpose for this reason the son of man was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil and the works of the devil in this contest is actually sin sin so he died in order that that original sin that made all humankind sinners to be atoned for so that the possibility to live a life that is free of the dominion of sin will come into view to us that are covenant people so when you find someone that is playing with sin he doesn't understand the implication of what the blood did it was payment sufficient to blot out the implication of the original sin so as to pave way for us to live in the newness of life exactly so covenant living would demand that I find grace in God to live consistent to the principles and the laws of God because the laws of God derive from the nature of God the reason why a man that works in covenant will not play with the issues of sin if you really understand the blood that was used to sign this covenant to make it go on record in the realm of the spirit part of what it achieved was that it blotted out uh, the position and the stranglehold of that original sin that constituted us sinners so Jesus had taken care of that legal situation and now it will become illegal if a Christian finds um, pleasure in living in sin that is anti-covenant realities number three John chapter 12 John chapter 12 from verse 24 the third aspect of the death of Jesus verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit this is a life-giving aspect of the death of Jesus the first aspect talks about a change of nature because the old man had to be judged second aspect talked about the removal of the original predicament on the human race hallelujah because Jesus is man's basic need because of that situation of sin sin became our nature on the account of the fact that we our ancestor proclaimed independence against God in the Garden of Eden that proclamation is what the Bible calls sin the original sin in singular and we were born in that sin if you were born of man you were born in that package and the death of Jesus provided a legal premise for us to escape that kind of orientation and the possibility to live free of the tyrant that is called sin was now open to us so covenant living is living a life that is not under the dominion of sin covenant living is living a life that commits the old man to the cross perpetually and that's what bearing the cross is and then number three covenant living is living in the newness of life this third aspect of the death of Jesus the corn of wheat being committed to the ground so that it can bring forth much fruit there is a life 
a life context to which God has committed us. It's a life context. And our call to walk in covenant, and I need to tell you the difference between the old and the new covenant. One of the differences is that the old covenant they didn't have the enablement of the spirit. And the new covenant happens to have the enablement of the spirit. The things that God um, um, is expecting us to furnish in the Old Testament are spiritual things. But unfortunately, because of the original sin, we are carnal people. And we do not have the capacity to live up to the expectations of God. And it happens to be that in the New Testament, what God did is that he infused in us the life. And he infused in us the enablement to be able to furnish his expectations concerning us. 